All right, so now we know how to add new files, make changes to the code, stage those changes, and then finally make a commit to commit those changes. But sometimes when you're working on a project, you want to delete files as well. So how does that work when it comes to Git? Well, it works pretty much the same way. You can see over here, I've already added a new HTML file called gallery.html, and I actually made a commit for that new file off screen before this lesson. And you can see that commit inside the Git log, which I've already run. But if I now decide I don't want that file and I want to delete it, what do I do? Well, I can do it. I can just right click and delete the file as normal, first of all. And then if you run a git status, you're going to see that deleted file under the changes not staged. So we still need to stage the change, even though we deleted it. But how do we do that? Well, it doesn't really matter if we deleted it or updated it. We still add the change in the same way. So that's by saying git add and then either whatever the path and file name was, which was gallery.html or using the dot instead to say add all changes in the working directory to the staging area, which at the moment is just that delete. So let's do that then. And if we run git status again, we should see that delete change move to the staging area. Then we can make the commit as we normally would by running a git commit followed by the m flag to add a commit message and that could say something like delete gallery page and then once that's done if you run the command it's going to make that commit now we can check that by running the git log command again to view the commit history where we should see the one that we just made at the top so then that's how we commit deleted files exactly the same way as we commit new or changed files Okay, so something else you might want to do at some point is unstage files from the staging area if you didn't mean to add them. So say, for example, we make a simple edit in one of the HTML pages and it really doesn't matter which one or what the edit is. We just need a change that we can add to the staging area. So let's do this, save the file, and then we're going to run git add followed by a dot and press enter to add it to staging. And now if we run git status, we should see that that change is now staged. So... We can now unstage the change by running the git restore command with the staged flag to tell git we're restoring a file from the staging area, followed by whatever file we want to unstage. So let's do that now. Let's run the command git restore, followed by the double dash staged flag, and then the file name. And once we've done that, if we press enter, it's going to remove it from the staging area and put the change back in the working directory. Now we can verify that by running the git status command and we'll see that the change is no longer staged. Another useful thing we can do with git restore is restore changes from the working directory to their previous state from the last commit before any changes were made to the file. For example, I made a change to this file a moment ago, right? But imagine now I want to discard that change. Well, I can do that by running the git restore command again this time without the staged flag and then the name of the file. And when we run this, it's going to restore the file to its previous state, like I said, from that last commit we made. Again, we can verify this by running git status again, which should tell us there is no changes in the working tree. Okay, so there's one more thing I want to talk about in this lesson, and that is how to completely untrack files in your repository. So we know that when we first make a file within a repo, Although Git is aware of that file, it doesn't track it by default. We have to stage and commit the file before Git tracks any future changes to it, right? So then, what if we have a file in this project that we don't want Git to track anymore? Well, in a lot of cases, you might just delete that file manually and commit the change. Problem solved. However, sometimes you might want to keep the file in your working directory, but also tell Git not to track it. And this could be a file that you accidentally committed in previous commits, for example. And now you want to tell Git that going forward, you don't want to track this file anymore. So the way we can do this is by using the command git rm, which stands for remove. So for example, I could decide that for whatever reason, I don't want the contact page to be tracked in this repo anymore. So I could type git rm, then a flag, which is double dash cached, then the file name, which in this case could be contact.html. Now this cached flag tells Git that even though you want to stop tracking the file, I want you to keep it around in my project. And now if I run this, Git will stop tracking the file completely. And you can see in my editor that it's gone green again, which is the color of new untracked files for me. Now just be aware that if you added this file to staging again and committed it, then Git would start tracking the file again. 
And by the way, if we didn't add the cached flag, Git would completely remove the file from the working di uh, directory again. It would be the same pretty much as manually deleting the file and staging that change. But anyway, I think that's enough about deleting and untracking files for now. And up next, I want to talk about how we can navigate the project history and all the commits that we've been making so far.